Welcome to this lecture on the general deduction formula. If we take a look at our tax framework, this is just to show you where we are currently. We are looking at the deductions and allowances. So just as a quick reminder, gross income, less exempt income gives us income. From that, you'll deduct your deductions and any assessed losses, your taxable capital gain, deduct donations which are paid to a public benefit organization, and that gives us our taxable income. So we're now starting to look at deductions and allowances. Now, when you look at deductions and allowances, there are three broad categories of deductions and allowances. There is capital allowances. Now, capital allowances, this will be, for example, if you go and you buy a machine or a factory, then you get an allowance. A, which you can claim as a deduction from SARS. It's almost like a depreciation, but from a SARS perspective. Then we have a section or sections that are considered special deductions or specific deductions, they sometimes refer to. There's the sections in the Act where they, the Act and the Commission and SARS and the government have identified certain transactions which they want to specify how you should claim a deduction. So, for example, legal costs, they'll tell you how to claim a deduction. They'll tell you how to claim a deduction for leasehold improvements, how much you claim a deduction for uh, learnership allowances. So what I want you to understand, these are specific types of expenses which have identified the government and which they want to tax in a certain way. But it is impossible to write a section for every single possible expense people can incur. Because every, every single person, every single business has different expenses. So... They had to write a section which you can apply in all instances which they, when there's no special deduction or no capital allowance. They had to give us a general section, and that is called the general deduction formula, which is discussed in section 11a and section 23. And this is the focus of our lecture here, the general deduction formula. So sometimes you will hear people talk about they're running a business and they claim expenses against the business. Usually what they're applying is the general deduction formula. Now, this is maybe not technically correct, but where we looked at the gross income definition, the gross income definition was the definition that gave us a general definition to test any amount of income against receipts and accruals. The general deduction is almost like the gross income's sister or brother, but on the deduction side. That gives you a general rule on how to claim deductions. So if we look at the general deduction formula, the first thing that you need to understand about it is that this will apply only when you are carrying on a trade. Now we will look at what carrying on a trade means separately, but carrying on a trade is not just if you have a business. You'll see it as a very broad definition. And even if you are just earning a salary, you might be carrying on a trade. Right, so if you're carrying on a trade, the general deduction formula is then split into two parts. The positive test and the negative test. The positive test is usually where most of our discussion lies, but negative test is also very important, obviously. The positive test tells you when you may deduct things. So yes, you can deduct. Whereas the negative test is no, you may not deduct. The positive test is discussed in section 11A. And the negative test is part of section 23, section 23G. You'll also see that the rest of section 23 includes other considerations uh, and Basically what they tell you in section 23 is they give you a list of things which you may not claim a deduction for. So that is why I just made this comment here. You should really do consider section 23, the rest of section 23 as well. Okay. So, like I've already mentioned, what the positive and the negative tests are. So let's look at the positive test. So this is in section 11. It says... For the purpose of determining the taxable income derived by any person from carrying on any trade. So first of all, I just want you to see they're talking about to determine the taxable income of a person. That is why in our framework, our final answer is taxable income. So they say, if you are doing this calculation, so this tax framework, right, and you are carrying on a trade, they shall be allowed as deductions from the income of such a person. What does income mean, guys? Gross income less exempt income gives us income. Remember, that's a definition in Section 1. 
So they say you can deduct against that amount any, and here we go, expenditure and losses actually incurred in the production of income provided such expenditure and losses are not of a capital nature. So, this little first little bit here in section 11 is what we call the preamble. The reason why it means is that first sentence where it says, if you are calculating taxable income and you're carrying on a trade, you can claim a deduction. That will apply to section 11b, section 11c, d, e, etc. So all of those sections are the deductions. The so section 11 is our, one of our deduction sections. All right, so if you are carrying on a trade, expenditure and losses actually incurred in the production of income, not of a capital nature. That is the general deduction formula's positive test. And that is where we are now for each of these elements. Expenditure and losses actually incurred in a production of income, not of capital nature, and carrying on a trade. We are going to explore what that means. Section 23G gives us the negative test. So this is a situation where you may not deduct it. So it says, there's the preamble. This first part here is again a preamble, so it applies to everything in section 23. It says, no deductions shall in any case be made for the following matters. So section 23 says, you may not claim this. So remember, when we looked at gross income, there were special inclusions to gross income. When you studied it, you would have seen that. So those are amounts that may not meet the requirements of gross income, but they have to be included. Section 23 is almost the opposite of that. These are situations where it may meet the requirements to claim a deduction, but it's just not allowed. So if Section 23 applies, you just can't claim a deduction. Right, so just for now, Section 23G says, you may not claim any monies claimed as a deduction from income derived from trade to the extent to which such monies were not laid out or expended for the purpose of trade. So what are they saying? They say, you can't claim a deduction for money which were not expended, so spent, for the purpose of trade. Okay, so I'm going to use this, and I always use this as an example. I think it's an easy one. Here's a building, a house, right? The, it's a doctor owns this house. The doctor takes 20% of that house and converts it into doctor's consulting rooms. Okay, now, if the doctor incurs water and electricity costs of a thousand rands, the doctor will be able to claim 20% of that. Why? Because 20% of that house is used as for business. So this section 23G is what actually tells us that that remaining 80% you can't claim a deduction for. Why? Because it was not used for trade. So we are now in the rest of the lecture going to start exploring these different elements and what they mean.